So while mass spectrometry allows us to determine the percent abundance of certain isotopes in order to determine the average atomic mass for an element, photoelectron spectroscopy actually allows us to determine the electron configuration of an element and therefore identify an element. So really quickly, just as a review, the further an electron is from the nucleus, the lower its ionization energy is going to be. And so we use that fact in order to look at this um, graph right here. So if you look at this, notice ionization energy. We also will sometimes call it the binding energy. It decreases as you move from left to right. So since it decreases, that means that the peak furthest to the left has the greatest ionization energy, meaning it's the closest to the nucleus. So what's really cool about a PES is you literally are just reading out the electron configuration as you go, because keep in mind, when you start with the electron configuration 1s, that's the closest to the nucleus and lowest in energy. Okay, And the only other thing you have to know about a PES is that the height of these peaks represents the relative number of electrons. So if you notice right here, the very first peak, that's going to be 1s. And so since I'm continuing on, I know it has to be 1s2. The next peak is going to be the next electron configuration. And notice it has the same height. So this is going to be 2s2. The next peak is going to be 2p6. The next peak, notice it's as tall as the 2s. So it's going to be 3s2. Then the next peak, 3p6. And then finally, the last peak is half as tall as the 3s2, which tells us it's going to be 4s1. Okay, So that tells us that that is going to be potassium. So it's a really cool technique because it lines up perfectly. It's showing you each of the individual sublevels. right? It's showing you the electron configuration. So just as a review, what it's counting on is the fact that those 1s electrons are the hardest to remove because they are the closest to the nucleus. Meanwhile, the 4s is the easiest to remove because it is the farthest from the nucleus. Okay? So let's look at this example right here. So it gives me three different peaks. So I start with this first peak. That first peak is going to be 1s2. I know it looks taller than the previous problem, but it's all relative. So that's going to be 1s2. The next peak is going to be 2s2. And the last peak, because it is half as tall as the other two, it is going to be 3p1 because it's 1s2, 2s2, it's going to be 2p1 because this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So the element is boron. Okay, so just a couple of other things for you to keep in mind. If, for example, um, I, instead of uh, working with boron, for example, what if I want to find the electron config, or what if I want the PES for aluminum, for example? Okay, so one thing that will change is the relative number of electrons, right? It would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p three in that case. So it would be um, taller than the, uh, the first two peaks right there. The other thing you have to consider is the overall binding energy or the ionization energies. Okay, Because remember, the further as you move across the periodic table from left to right, in general, ionization energy increases. And as you move from top to bottom, ionization energy decreases. So if you have an element which has a greater ionization energy overall, right, all of its peaks are going to be to the right of the original peak. So the last thing I wanted to really touch on, quickly touch on with this is what if, for example, I gave you the PES of potassium and I said, okay, now determine the PES of calcium, right? Calcium is just one over from potassium. It has one more proton. Well, there are two different things that are going to change. First of all, since calcium's electron configuration is not 4s1, it's 4s2, the last peak is going to be twice as high because now it's going to be 4s2. The other thing that changes going from potassium to calcium is the fact that calcium has one more proton, meaning all of its ionization energies are going to be greater than the ionization energy of potassium, which means all of its peaks are going to be to the right of potassium's peaks. So you would have, after this 1s2, you'd have another, if I, were, if I said, hey, can you draw the PES of calcium on this diagram right here, you would have a peak right to the right of every single one of these peaks, 
And for the 4S, it would be a peak to the right, but twice as tall. Okay, So that's sometimes we like to be able to expand because this honestly is not that difficult. You're just writing the electron configuration. But then we like to have you anticipate what the PES would be for a different element by comparing ionization energies.